Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. 
So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the morning of Pentecost, last Sunday, we had a break-in at Calvary Church. No one was ever in danger, and nothing was stolen, but it did cause quite an alarm. Two interlopers squeezed through an open window up in the choir room, and made themselves at home. The window had been opened to invite a breeze in the very hot choir room. Alla Lewis, our brilliant and brave director of music, first alerted me to the break-in. Now at Calvary, we try, we strive to welcome all in the name of Christ. The parish and our many partners in ministry are a reflection of that hospitality that we welcome all colors and conditions and types of people. But this was an incursion rather than an invitation and felt very different. It made me pause and gave rise to all sorts of questions. Do we welcome someone who was not invited or expected? Do we welcome someone who doesn't vote like we do or think or look like we do? What about those who come on their own terms with their own agenda? Are we supposed to welcome someone who comes in through the window rather than the front door? Now, what made this much worse is that Alan and I, both massively intimidating figures, both Alan and I unexpectedly 
confronted the interlopers in the choir room before anyone else arrived. We ordered them sternly to leave. They didn't. We tried to lure them out, but they were frozen in place, probably in fear, no doubt. And finally, one of them left the same way they came in because of the guard dog, Alvin, who's a rat terrier. Now, a parishioner got involved and accidentally broke a window to drive out the intruder. At least we were rid of them just in time for church. That's some behind-the-scenes footage if you like that type of thing. Now, before you get too concerned, because I've seen the looks on faces, let me tell you why this makes a great church story rather than an extensive police report. The two interlopers were birds, specifically doves. And the dove is a symbol, dove, water, fire, wind, of the Holy Spirit. There's a wonderful image of that just there in the middle of the window, a dove descending. The heavens were opened and a dove like that of the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus. Ironically, on the Feast of Pentecost, the day of the break-in, we spent the early morning trying to drive the doves out of the church. And then we spent the later morning trying to recognize and welcome the arrival of the Holy Spirit into our midst. I think there's a lesson there somewhere. Now, last Sunday, to help us recognize the gift of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God in our midst, our preacher, Deanna, proposed a provocative question. Do we believe in a far-off God? That is, is the God that we think about, imagine, worship, far removed, not connected to the human experience? Who or what is the God that we profess to believe in? And the doctrine of the Trinity is the church's reflection over time on those very questions. The Trinity is our best attempt to describe in words who and what God is like. And that's what this feast, Trinity Sunday, is about. And by the way, this is my third year in a row preaching on this. I should talk to someone about the preaching schedule. I do it, by the way. Like the doctrine, let me approach these questions indirectly with two questions of my own. First, where does this idea, the doctrine of the Trinity, come from? And secondly, why does any of this matter at all? We inherited our idea of God from our Jewish ancestors. And our rather long reading from the book of Genesis tells the story of God creating everything that is very descriptively. This was never intended as a, a scientific explanation, but to be a love story. And the Bible, particularly the early part, is filled with epic tales, with human sagas, with drama and intrigue and betrayal, power, sacrifice, redemption, and it is outright violent at times. It's remarkably similar by design to real life, if we understand it, what it's intended to be. At its heart, the Bible is a love story about God and God's people. Read it that way. Now, the early books of the Bible tell about the relationship God had with these holy people and their attempts to figure out how do we live in the world? What is the difference, if any, between good and bad, good and evil? How am I to relate to my tribe and to other tribes and even to those who I would consider enemies? How do I know what a meaningful life is? What does it mean to be created in God's image? Why does any of this matter? All throughout the scriptures, one sees the people growing in their awareness, in their knowledge of God and the world and themselves. And most of the time, at least according to the story, they get it wrong. All these people in the Bible seem to fall apart. See Adam and Eve for the earliest example of that. Now, these earliest followers believed that there were many gods, and that was the prevailing idea all throughout the known world, India, Rome, Babylon, Greece, Egypt, and so on. There were many gods in existence. What made the Jewish people distinct is that they believed there were many gods, but there was only one that they would worship. Yahweh was the proper name for God. It was one among many, but that one was ours, and we belong to this one. This nascent belief is reflected in ways that become obvious when you know what to look for in the Bible. 
and their belief evolved over time. But early on, this type of belief is prevalent. Whenever you see the word Lord, L-O-R-D, in all capital letters, like the Lord is my shepherd, it's a stand-in for the proper name of God because it was believed that was too sacred to say aloud. Now, this understanding of God evolved from their history, trying to make sense of the experience of how they encountered the world as individuals and as a community. And the great insight of the Jewish people, their gift to the world that we have inherited is called monotheism. There is one God, not many. This is the one who created the heavens and the earth. This is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, our ancestors. This is the God who delivered us from slavery in Egypt and led us to the promised land. And they often refer to this God as Lord or Father because, again, the proper name was far too sacred to say. This is the God who creates, who knows, who loves, and acts in human history with people. And that is a stunning insight. Fast forward to the time in and around and after Jesus. The people of the early church were trying to reconcile that inherited belief of who and what God is and their understanding that Jesus was also God incarnate. How do we stay true to who we are and what we've inherited with this new experience that we have encountered? Just like them, we do this all the time, trying to integrate experience into a sense of self, into a sense of communal identity. This took a very long time, as it does for us, using the tools they had at hand, in their case, Greek philosophy. What they developed is what we now call the doctrine of the Trinity. The window into the Nicene Creed is, the window into this is from the Nicene Creed in the year 325. It's a statement of belief, and if you can guess it, because it was church, it was a statement of belief written by a committee. And note there is a brief mention of God the Father at the beginning, because everybody basically understood what that meant. And by the way, there is an old cliche, if the sermon is particularly bad or boring or heretical, you say the creed immediately louder and more forcefully to cover that up. So I'll be listening today after this. Most of the creed, after the part about the Father, is trying to make sense of who and what Jesus is and how Jesus is related to God the Father. And note, too, the Holy Spirit only gets a few lines at the end. The concluding benediction in our epistle from Paul today is the fullest expression of that idea of the Trinity found in the Bible. The Spirit is the presence, the power of God, the force, if you will, that exists in the, the world. In the original creed, the Spirit only got one line in the year 325. And then later in the year 381, it was again amended, again by committee, and we hear what we say today. In some, the Trinity is an attempt to make sense of the inherited belief with this love story from God in reconciliation with our communal experience. Now, the second and more important question is, why does any of this matter at all? It's because we believe that God breaks into human history. That is part of the point of the incarnation. God becomes a human in Jesus to be one of us, with us, and for us. The Holy Spirit binds and empowers all parts of the creation. The same Lord who created the heavens and the earth will move heaven and earth just to know you, to love you, that you are valued and that you matter. One of the most hopeful lines in all the scriptures is found in today's Old Testament reading, and that is that we are created in God's image. To work to understand fully what that means will utterly transform your life. That is what the Jewish people have done. To be made in God's image means that you are called to create, to know, to love, and most of all, to be free. Do you have a purpose, a story that matters? Do you know the reason that you are here and can you articulate that? Everywhere around us, we are bombarded with narratives, with images that say life does not matter. There is no meaning. It's all about power or pleasure or avoiding pain. There is no truth. You should be constantly afraid now and of the next big thing, 
another pandemic, another health or financial crisis, or be afraid of war or injustice or the other side or whatever. That fear is spiritual and emotional slavery, and God desires us to be free. To begin to know what it means to be created in God's image is not an easy endeavor. Freedom from slavery, be it from sin, from fear, from the Egyptians or whoever the power of the day is, even from the fear of death will require sacrifice on your part. To die to self is the old way to express that. And it does not matter how you come to this freedom from fear, to awareness of God, to freedom in Christ. It does not matter if you come in the front door or the expected or official way, the window or even the side door. It doesn't matter if you don't understand all of these things. Because the Holy Spirit might break in in unexpected ways and unexpected ways wherever you are. However God's presence and power arrives, pay attention. Do not ignore it. Do not drive it away, but find a way to recognize and welcome to make a home. To be made in God's image means you are called to create, to know, to love, to be free. That is a life worth living and a story worth sharing, that you are alive in the power of the Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the Holy Trinity, one God, saying, hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, for the life and ministry of this congregation, for Sheldon Calvary Camp, for theologians and teachers, for all who seek to understand the mysteries of God, keep your church in peace and be with us always to the end of the age. Holy Trinity, One God, hear our prayer. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all the members of the Jewish community, particularly our friends of Tree of Life Congregation, that they may find courage and strength as the trial continues. For people who work for justice and reconciliation, for all who live in the midst of war, conflict, or terror, For those who serve our country, particularly Christine, Trace, Robert, John, Chris, George, and Brian, for their families and for the safe return of those far from home. Let humankind made in your image find the way to unity and peace. Holy Trinity, one God, hear our prayer. For those who make decisions about the Earth's resources, for those who work on the land and sea, for those striving to end hunger, for scientists who help us to see creation in a new way, 
for researchers, physicians, nurses, and relief workers who bring life to others. Bless every living thing and make us wise stewards of all that you have made. Holy Trinity, one God, hear our prayer. For those in any need or trouble, for Erica, Elise, Diane, Ruth, Henry, Margaret, Stephen, Paula, Phyllis, Jamie, Marianne, Hattie, Richard, Mary, Kieran, Phyllis, Stan, Mildred, Cam, Thomas, Joan, Jan, Genevieve, Judith, Phil, Elliot, John, Tony, Michael, Alicia, Shannon, and all those who have been commended to our prayers. For people living throughout the world, living with HIV and AIDS, for people suffering from COVID-19 and for their loved ones, for those struggling with addiction and those in recovery, for strength for caregivers and health workers, for those whom we now name. Help them find strength and wholeness in you. Holy Trinity, one God, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for Justin Aaronworth, Glenn Rue, Courtney C., and Mora. For those in whose memory altar flowers are given today, John P. Davis Jr. and Loris and Telma McKeague. For all victims of gun violence, for those who mourn, for those whom we now remember. May they rest from their labors. Holy Trinity, one God, hear our prayer. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, welcome to Calvary Church on this Feast of Trinity. Just a few announcements this morning. One upcoming on Saturday morning uh, from, well, from noon to 4 p.m. is a car wash in our parking lot. That is to benefit the Alderdice School uh, rowing team. Why are we doing that? Because Emma Schauf, a lifelong parishioner, is one of the coaches of the Alderdice rowing team. Later that day, so 12 to 4 for car wash from 4 to 6, will be something we are calling Yappy Hour. That is purely a social event to invite your dog to join in with all sorts of people. You do not have to have a dog to come. All will be welcome at that event in the garden. The used book sale put on by the Calvary Bookstore will take place in August. We invite you to drop off your uh, used books that we will sell. If you're like I am, you donate 10 and then buy 20 more in August, but we welcome that too. Uh, you may have noticed a, a new name at the end of the prayers of the people there. There's a young girl, four years old from West Virginia, named Alicia. 
she had a very severe uh, ATV or four-wheeler accident uh, just a few days ago. She is an Episcopalian in West Virginia and is here in Pittsburgh receiving treatment. Her grandmother has been here. She was with us at 9 o'clock service. We are forming or serving as a type of surrogate congregation for her. Please do remember Alicia in your prayers. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, and offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Let us bless the Lord. 